Welcome to Really Dicey. Today we're going to talk about the Beta Quadrant Sourcebook from Star Trek Adventures made by Modifius. It's another fantastic sourcebook for Star Trek Adventures and you should buy it right away. Well, thanks for joining us. See you next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, that, I mean, all right. So this time around, I really try to look for flaws. All the books have been fantastic. Again, Beta Quadrant deals with uh, Federation, deals with Klingons, deals with Romulans does a fantastic job giving you the history of each uh, civilization, uh, gives you the culture, gives you the uh, uh, everything you need to know to run the, run, uh, the, the game. It uh, gives you kind of all the resources you need to really start uh, the adventure. I just couldn't find any flaws really. Um, maybe not enough art, I, that's not a flaw. <laughs> <laughs> I am you know. the only, yeah. I, the, the, game was was another fantastic book i can couldn't find anything wrong with it uh, you know if there's anything it, it would be that despite its name this should be the first quadrant you buy because um this has all the classics in it this has all the stuff that you think of when you think star trek this has this has the klingons this has the romulans this has some great information about the federation so these are these have all the classic character races that you think of first um, yeah. and but, I, 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 have to, I have to give them uh, props because with the Federation history I expect that they update it because you know since original series you know obviously the uh, eugenic wars didn't happen in the 1990s but no they kept it <laughs> in there I was I was pleasantly surprised that they kept the history as they 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 uh, wrote it in the series you know so that yeah once again, Go the Modifians <laughs> prove that <laughs> they are Trekkies through and through. You know, this game really knows its canon, really respects its canon, uh, in so much that they, like they did in uh, some of their other books, they make apologistic arguments <laughs> for when uh, the stuff we see doesn't add up. They got a little section talking about the confusing ranks of the Romulans uh, and how sometimes the Tal Shiar people have ranks in the military and sometimes they don't. And, uh, you know, instead of saying, oh, well, that was a mistake, the writers say, no, 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 this is because sometimes the Tal Shiar pretends to be in the military and sometimes, so they, they make this kind of, uh, yeah, they, it's a, they make an apologistic argument for the way, for what we see on screen. And the way the book is written, it's like a debriefing. I mean, it's like, not a debriefing, it's like a briefing uh, to Star Trek officers. So if something doesn't make sense, the briefing officer will admit, well, our intelligence isn't quite sure about this, but this does seem to be the case, which I just think is a wonderful touch. I mean, it really pulls yeah. you in to the game and makes you think that this is real and you're in Starfleet. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, it's really good. I would say, and, and this is you know, one of the best things you can say, probably the best thing you can say about any work of Star Trek, is I think Ron Berry would be proud. I think that particularly uh, the information about the Federation uh, really captures his vision. Uh, you know, they, they, have a, uh, they have a section about the, eco the, the economy and they talk about how it works, which is great. You know, and uh, they have a section about Federation culture, which is a wonderful mix of other cultures. Uh, they, they, they say that the, your average Federation citizen just takes bits and pieces from other cultures um, and incorporates them. They appreciate all of them. You walk into a restaurant and you'll have, you know, you, you might have um, a dish from New Orleans, but you'll have Romulan wine and there'll be Klingon art on the wall. And, you know, um, you might have some rock, some Vulcan music playing in the background. And I, I just thought that was great. I, I, I think that, um, that it had a real sense of openness and, and hope and optimism that I, I think is terribly important to, uh, to real Star Trek. Um, hmm. But then, then they talk about the other cultures, and they go into them pretty well. They, you, they talk about the Vulcans yeah. and the Klingons and the Romulans, and for each case, you get, you get their culture, 
uh, you you get their politics, you you get their military, you get their science. So yeah, it's it's a it's it's only hundred over a little bit over 130 pages. You know, again, you have it's kind of set up the way other the other source books are. Do you have yep. the um, uh, you know explanation about the Beta Quadrant? It goes into the species afterwards in the next chapter uh then it goes into a, a chapter about the starships and then at the end it gives you these uh adventure seeds and i should mention that uh, you know in addition to all the uh you know the races that you think of you also get we also get very detailed information about the orions which is really interesting the crime syndicate so you can add you can add crime you know pirates to your game and you also get uh, the gourd they actually tell you a lot about the Gorn, which is really neat because we only Gorn twice, I think maybe. Not, not so, enough. Yeah, not enough. So you get you get all sorts of all the information you would need to incorporate the Gorn. I, and and as a side note, there's apparently a really unpleasant aftermath to the original Gorn series arena where Gorn where Kirk meets the Gorn. There's kind of a sad aftermath to that. Well. Hmm. <laughs> that's just how the, <laughs> that's just how the universe unfolds sometimes but um, yeah. yeah so you've got lots of great information one thing I particularly liked was uh, the Shackleton expanse now this is apparently something that the more the uh, the modifians uh, uh, came up with. <laughs> this. This, this is their living cam campaign so if you go to their website um, and sign up for their living campaign You'll get uh, frequent new missions and new details about the Shackles and Expanse. The Shackles and Expanse is this expansive space. You know, it's, it's huge. It's full of anomalies. It hasn't been explored, so it's a perfect setting for missions to explore it. And what's great about it is that um, because of where it lies, the Klingons and the and the Federation have joined forces to explore the expanse so there's actually a there's a there's a um, a space station right on the edge of the shackleton expanse um, that is run by a joint force of klingons and federation and i think that's a fantastic base for a game uh, the uh, the book gives you all the details about the station as well as the uh, the key NPCs, um, you've got the, the captain and uh, the the science, the head scientist, and the doctor, and the chief engineer, and they're all a mix of humans and Federation and Klingons. Um, and then it talks about how you can base your your ship there, which I think would be great. So you can use that you can use this base as a background. Or what I thought you could what would be really neat is you could take out those NPCs put in your your own players and run a game based around the station and you can kind of have your own deep space nine show right you know mm. um, you could have a space station of different races working together on the edge of this fantastic bit of space to explore so i thought this book was just brimming with potential i thought it was great and again like their other books it it really branched out into all the crazy places you expect from Star Trek. They mentioned the mirror universe. You know, they mentioned time travel. Uh, they mentioned um, links to the Borg. And, you know, they mentioned, uh, they mentioned the Dominion and all sorts of things. So you really get the sense that this all ties together in, in, the, in the larger Star Trek universe. You know, uh, I think the releasing it in the quadrant books was a really clever way to do it because um, you've got to organize it somehow and i think that was a really clever way for them to do it and you know if you you buy all of these books and you put them together and you've got all of star trek in front of you to play with and i think it's really really spectacular yeah i, I again I, I couldn't find any faults with this book it's it's great it's <laughs> uh, exactly what you need for for playing star trek yeah um, of, of course, they offer new life paths as well, mm -hmm. uh, you know, featuring um, featuring some rather obscure aliens that might have shown up only in one or two episodes. Uh, yeah, I was surprised they added they added the uh, the Bensite. 
believe that's how you pronounce it, the Benzite race, which is, a, for, for what I remember, only appeared in one episode of Star Trek Next Generation. And I remember yeah. that because that character was so annoying. I, <laughs> um, I was like, I, I remember it pretty well. But, uh, yeah. But, uh, so, yeah, but I was surprised. I was like, wow, they added this as a life path? Okay, cool. You know? Yeah. Yeah, they had lots of, lots of stuff. You know, it's, it's really fascinating to read the books because uh, you keep thinking, wait, yeah, I remember that guy. What episode was he in? <laughs> you know, it, you know it's, oh, yeah. it's almost like a, it's almost like a trivia quiz <laughs> for Trekkies to read the book. Yeah. What episode did this alien appear in? Oh, um, wait, that's the one with the, the giant spaceship through time. And uh, it's great. It's great. And, you know, it made a big, it, uh, a lot of references were made to uh, yesterday's Enterprise, which is one of my absolute favorite episodes. Yeah. They even uh, mentioned about uh, Star Trek, the Enterprise, the series, like the Zindis. They're in this yes, book too. Yes, the Zindis oh. are in these books. That's right. That's right. So, you know, all sorts of great stuff. You know, um, if you're a Trekkie, if you're a, you know, a role-playing Trekkie, you definitely want to pick up this book. It's, um, it's great. It's, a, it's another fantastic book. I, I'm... Uh, I'm I'm excited to see where they go from here, but yeah. uh, they they understand so, it. What what uh, rating would you give this? Oh well, this is a, another um, intelligence of eighteen. It's yeah fascinating and highly logical. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So yes, if you love the old stuff, especially get this book. It's a lot of fun. <laughs>